morning, church. My name is John, and I am going to deliver the word of God to the congregation this morning. Uh, the subject of uh, our study today is a, goal, a call to prepare. A call to prepare. We can find this in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 1, the first chapter, verses 5 to 25. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to the Luke Gospel, the first chapter, verses 5 to 25. I think as we all know, this is the first Sunday of the Advent, and as we prepare our heart for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in this sermon, we will look at the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, who were very old in their age, as the angel reveals to them that they will have a son, even in their old age who will go before Jesus Christ in the spirit and power of Elijah. So please turn your Bibles to the Luke Gospel. I will begin reading from verse 5. It says, In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zachariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly, but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was crippled with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will not fill with the he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. He will bring back many of people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens. Because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them 
but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown me favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the love that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that you died for it, that you have washed our sins away. Father, you see us as your children, and you have called us to come and sit at your feet. I pray, O oh God, as I'm speaking, may you speak through me, and may your congregation, your word, dwell inside their heart to transform people. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. So in today's passage, the first important thing we see is from verses 5 through 10. Uh, this portion of the story introduces a faithful couple who are ministry with the Lord, who love God, and who lives integrity and honor before the Lord. I don't think that they never sinned. They were also like us but they were godly people. These were godly people. And they have been praying for their marriage for a long time to become, to have a child. And as, as you know, every Jewish woman, their dreaming is to God blessing them with a child. But they prayed, 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 there was no child. That dream, that dream was long gone for Zachariah and Elizabeth. But nevertheless, when they were praying for God and no response, they could continue praying. They praying and be faithful before God. As a priest, Zachariah would invest 50 weeks of the year at his hometown teaching and serving in the synagogue. However, Two weeks out of the year, he and all other priests who were part of the division of Abijah would head to Jerusalem and serve within the temple. There were 24 different priestly divisions in the biblical days. Each division consisted of hundreds of priests to help with the various responsibilities that were needed both in their hometowns, as well as the temple in Jerusalem. Throughout the year, there was rotation that enabled each of the 24 divisions of priests to serve. Zechariah was selected for a literary once in his lifetime opportunity to preside over this holy priestly duty. Zechariah was about now to encounter an angel. That is the giving the call of prepare. If you remember, in verse says, it says, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he started and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been held. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. What a wonderful story. You are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be a great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or any drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You see here, when Zechariah saw the angel of the Lord, he was afraid. Why was he afraid? I think 
everyone will be afraid if you just see an angel of the Lord because we are not used to. You remember the shepherds, when the angels came to them at night, they also were afraid because they are not used to. And I think everyone will be afraid. You remember at night the angel of the Lord appeared when they appeared to the shepherds and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified, says the Bible. And always the angel will say, don't be afraid because I'm not going to harm you. I'm bringing you a good news. I don't think angels are coming to us to harm us, but they bring us a good news. Don't be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, is going to bear you a son, and you give name John. What a great news. But Zachariah couldn't believe it because he was very old. The wife is also old. How can an old woman and his wife get a child? He said, I am an old man. My wife is barren. She can never give child. And she's also in her old age. Zechariah adopted the angel's message. From Zechariah's human thoughts, his thoughts were ununderstandable. But with God, everything is possible. Whatever God promises, he's going to fulfill it because he is a faithful God and can never lie. So their fulfillment, at times maybe the next day, but they will be at the proper time. God's time is always the best. It can delay, but whatever he says is going to come true, he's going to fulfill it. So if you are waiting for God to answer your request, your prayer request, or your need, I think you need to trust him and remain patient. No matter how impossible God's promises may seem, what he has said in his word will come true at the right time. So here we see when Gabriel appeared to Zechariah to announce the good news that Elizabeth would, despite his age, would give birth to a son, his words was immersed in the good news. Gabriel communicated to the call of prepare as predicted John's ministry recorded in verses 16 and 18. It said, many of the people of Israel will bring back to the Lord their God. This is his ministry. And he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn their hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready people prepare for the Lord. Zechariah asks, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man. My wife is also very old. The call of Christmas to Zechariah was all about preparation. John is going to be born, and he is going to prepare people's hearts for our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, Zechariah cannot speak because he did not believe what God had said. But meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah for his blessings, and they're wondering why he delayed so long in the temple. They don't know what is going on. But when he came out, he could not speak to the people. And they realized he had seen a vision in the temple. For he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. Now the people were waiting outside when Zechariah came out and pronounced the customary blessings upon them. They were waiting that he would come and bless them. But this man came outside. He, he couldn't speak. The people conclude that 
there is something happening in the temple. So the story of angel who encountered Zechariah, the old priest, now it, has, it was a time to go home and begin the preparation for John's arrival. So now he couldn't speak, but he had to go home and wait till his wife Elizabeth bear a son before he can speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in circulation. The Lord has done this for me, she said Elizabeth. In these days, he has shown his favor in taking away my disgrace among the people. Zachariah and Elizabeth were both godly people. Yet they were suffering. Some Jews at that time didn't believe in a bodily resurrection. So their hope was in their children. I think it's also in where I come from in Africa. Uh, we don't have any social benefits. So your children will be the hope for your future. So if you don't have children, it means if you get old, uh, maybe you are going to suffer. So Zachariah and Elizabeth had been childless for many years. And at this time, they were too old to expect any change in that situation. Of course, they felt humiliated and hopeless. But God was waiting at the right time to encourage and take away their disgrace. So this call of Christmas could not have happened to a more deserving couple. In a quiet moment of his job, an angel appeared during Zechariah's workday in the temple and speak his message from God. These were ordinary people doing their ordinary jobs in their ordinary lives and being faithful to God and one another through it all. So I think as we prepare our homes, as we prepare church, we see all the decorations here. I was so glad last Thursday when you came here and see all this decoration. It reminds me that Christmas is on the way coming. And I think we need to prepare our hearts waiting for the coming of Christ. So we may invest time preparing our hearts for the advent of the only king, that is our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we need to respond to his call to prepare during the Christmas season? I think in order to prepare, we must have alone quiet time with the Lord. Because what I believe is God always want to have a quality time with us. And God speak to us through the Holy Bible. We can pray, that is we are speaking to God. But God to speak to us is through his word. So we have to have a quality, quiet time with the Lord. Read the scripture and be obedient to his commandments. He has given all the commandments in the Bible. So when we read, we need to obey him, what he is telling us to do. We need to love God and love our neighbors, as it's written. We must make time and love one another and serve one another. And you also must share in the good news to other people, especially in this Christmas time. Because there are many people who have not accepted Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And my sisters and brothers, as Jesus came and died for you and me to save us, we have to show and also share the love of God to people who doesn't know him. I think sharing Christ's love is very important for the church. 
and this church, IBC, we have a mission that the Lord has given us. is to show God's love to people. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Witness to others. And teach them to love and follow Christ. I don't know about you. If you are and haven't yet accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone is a sinner. It's not because of what you are doing or what you have done. It's because of Adam. Adam sinned, and all of us who are the roots of Adam also fall short for the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Wages, I think, is something that you earn. If you work, end of the month you have your salary. This is what you have done, and this is what you are going to earn. But the wages of sin is death. So if you sin, death is the wages that you are going to receive. But my sisters and brother, brothers, he's not talking about physical death. He's talking about spiritual death, separating from God for eternity. But there's a good news here. He said the gift of God is eternal life. What is the gift? Jesus is the gift of God. He said, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this way. Whilst we were sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus didn't wait for us to become holy, to become perfect before dying for us. Even in our sinful nature, he came to save us. I think if someone is a good person, it will be very easy for you to die for that person. But what about a wicked person, a criminal? Jesus loves us whilst we were sinners and died for us. And now, Jesus is telling you today and before the Christmas that I stand at your door and knock. He's knocking at your door now. If you hear his voice and open him, he's coming to you and be with you and eat with you. He's not coming to your house to push on your door to just hold you. But as I'm speaking, if you hear from your heart and open your heart, Jesus will come and live within you. Romans 10, 9, he says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with your heart, you believe. And with your mouth, you confess. My sisters and brothers, there is something that no one can do it for you. You, you are saved have to come before the cross and confess Jesus as your Lord. So my statement I will be making today is 2,000 years ago. God offered you a gift. But right now, as I'm speaking, are you ready to receive this gift? If you are ready to receive this gift, you may come here and we can pray with you. Or after the church service, you can see the leaders of this church and they will help you with the Bible. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for your word. I pray that your word will dwell inside our heart. Father, I pray that as coming for the Christmas, 
we will prepare our heart. Help us to sit at your feet and Father speak to us. We pray for your direction. We pray for your blessings in every area of our life. Bless us and guide us. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.